Welcome to this video on Godzilla, the king of monsters and the physics it defies. On this channel Synergy Files we aim to inspire budding engineers for a better, more sustainable world so please do subscribe to our channel. The character of Godzilla has entertained audiences worldwide. It has featured in over 30 movies and has also made multiple crossover appearances. Most notably Godzilla has been showcased in brawls against King Kong and the Avengers from the Marvel comics. The fictitious giant monster was conceived in Japan where it is known as Gojira. The character first appeared on screen in 1954 and was a metaphor for destruction caused by the atomic bomb. Since its first appearance it became a pop cultural icon and has regularly featured in movies, comics and animation. Over time the character of Godzilla has evolved and its scale has increased. Despite its destructive abilities, its role has been both of an antagonist and a protagonist. Parking aside its cinematic appeal, let's dig down to the science of Godzilla and analyze why the monster could not exist in real life. But before we do that, let's have a look at its origin. Godzilla in comics has been shown to be an ancient creature, aquatic creature that has mutated because of exposure to radioactive waste. It has evolved not only to withstand radioactivity but in fact it feeds off it. Now the first striking thing about Godzilla is its giant size. The latest version of Godzilla that is Shin Godzilla that was released in 2016 shows it to be 118.5 meter tall and weighs 120,000 tons. Just for comparison, the Empire State Building is 381 meters in height and weighs 365,000 tons. The building is three times the height and almost three times the weight of Godzilla. Which brings us to the question, would a threefold increase in Godzilla's height result in a threefold increase in its weight? Think about it. On a side note, even with its existing weight, if Godzilla were to walk on solid earth, there would be many places where the ground would give way based on the concentration of weight. The skyscrapers that we build, after all, have very deep foundations. Let's come back to the question of scaling of weight. Assume a 13 feet or a 4 meter tall African elephant that weighs 7.5 tons. If we double the scale of the elephant, that is make it 8 meters tall elephant, would its weight be 15 tons? The answer is no. The weight would actually be 60 tons. Why is that? It is because if we double the scale, the weight increases 8 times. The weight is dependent upon the volume. Doubling the scale means that we are doubling the height and the width and the length of the elephant. Weight increase therefore has a cubic relationship with the increase in scale. To support this change in weight, the bone structure has to change. The reason is that it is the cross-sectional area of the bone that is the critical factor which determines the stress in the bones. And the stress in the bones in turn determines the weight that the bone can handle. When we scale up an animal, hypothetically, the bone area increases with a square factor while the mass increases by a cubic factor. Hence the proportional increase in bone size would not be able to sustain the increased weight. So one should always remember this principle in engineering that scaling an object increases the weight cubically. Furthermore, even if Godzilla did exist, it would be an extremely slow moving animal as its high inertia would mean huge amount of energy required to change its state of rest or motion. And that is true. In nature, we don't see high speed, high agility and high maneuverability in larger animals. Only in the smallest of the animals, fishes, insects and hummingbirds do we observe the capability to change direction quickly or to accelerate rapidly. However, when Godzilla takes to water, the same inertia gives it a definite advantage. To understand this advantage, we have to learn something called the Reynolds number. When any object is moving through a fluid, the viscosity of the fluid tends to resist its motion. 
Reynolds number is simply the ratio of inertial force to viscous force. The larger the object is and the lesser viscous the fluid is, it is easier for the object to flow through it. Blue whales can achieve Reynolds number of 400 million. For Godzilla, the Reynolds number would be an order of magnitude higher. The speed of Godzilla in water has been reported in the movies to be 40 miles or about 17 meters per second. That means a Reynolds number of almost 2 billion. On the other end of the scale, imagine a tiny insect that tries to tread through water. The water's viscosity becomes a huge obstacle that it has to overcome. The Reynolds number in this case is much less than 1. Think about a person trying to swim in water and now think about the same person trying to swim in honey. You can then appreciate the effect of viscosity as a resisting force to the motion. So an insect trying to navigate through water would feel the same resisting force as us humans trying to navigate through honey or thick oil. With Godzilla, the effect of resistance is minimal or we can say that water feels a lot thinner to Godzilla than it would to all other animals. The scale of the monster also suggests the requirement of huge amount of energy. This energy has been suggested in the movies to come from nuclear fission and an omnivorous diet. In the most recent Godzilla installment, it is said to be a walking nuclear plant and the giant fins at the back are actually meant for cooling. Science suggests that the size of an animal is dependent upon several factors. Two of these factors are the availability of food and the enormity of the habitat. The biggest land animals are the African elephant that can get up to 7.5 tons in weight. To keep themselves fed, they can travel up to 80 miles a day. A blue whale similarly can weigh 200 tons. It is the biggest animal on the planet and can travel thousands of miles a year to traverse its feeding territory. It can travel 455 kilometers a day. There is a law that predicts the energy required by any organism based on its weight and it is called the Kleiber's law. The Kleiber's law can be mathematically represented as E equals to 70 times M to the power 3 fourth, where E is the energy in calories. Based on Godzilla's weight of 120,000 tons, the amount of calories required would be more than 80 million every day to sustain itself. It would therefore have to snack on whales and great whites to meet that goal. In light of this, it is somewhat accurately convenient to suggest that Godzilla can feed off radiation. It should be remembered that the energy of uranium is 80 million megajoules per kg. So it is easier for the monster to feed on pills of nuclear waste material rather than forage over large areas. To conclude, if Godzilla were to exist, it would have to have bones of metal and a diet that is nuclear. The monster would be better off staying in water rather than making a landfall where it would struggle to crawl, let alone walk on both feet. Even if the adamantium metallic bones are able to sustain its weight, the ground in many places would not. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more, do comment and ask questions. If you learned from the video and liked it, do give us a thumbs up. We have many more videos on this channel through which we try to make science and engineering a more engaging experience. Subscribe to the channel to stay updated. There are videos already on Spider-Man, Iron Man, Batman, Superman and Flash in our Science for Comic Book series. Make sure you check them out. Thank you for your attention.